Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today, I'm going to be playing my first loves inside the game. Firstly, it's the M26 Pershing. This tier 8 American medium tank just absolutely showed me how good it can be to be an all-round vehicle inside World of Tanks. Unfortunately, since then, it feels like all of the other vehicles have got a lot better than it has. Um, and so that kind of leaves the Pershing in this bit of a bizarre state but hopefully today I'm going to be able to show you that being well-rounded allows you to be flexible in every situation and that's the strategy that you have to have in a vehicle like this it is all about making sure that you use all of the strengths of the tank to be able to exploit the enemy's weaknesses or at least make up for the fact that they're not going to be that much better than you in any single regard and definitely not better than you in every regard so the Pershing, we've got ourselves into a bit of a, a bit of a sassy matchup here for the vehicle. Um, we've got ourselves some tier 9 tanks that we're going to have to deal with. I'm going to make my way all the way across to the east of the map. But there's one thing that I must do, don't worry. The screen is not frozen for a second. I forgot to use my special frame rate limiter when I'm playing World of Tanks and also recording at the same time, which will mean that now hopefully the video is going to have better FPS. Long story short, if I allow World of Tanks to suck my whole graphics card, then that means that the streaming program that I use, or the recording program that I use, doesn't have any juice to be able to then give you guys and girls a nice frame rate. Okay, now that that's done, that's multitasking. You can tell we've been professional this for eight years, where we can literally alt-tab, activate a program, and then get our first shot of the day off against the tier 8 light tank. Okay, so this map we're playing on Pilsen is a bit of a tricky one for a medium tank of this kind of speed. That's because I think it's incredibly important to try and win the east of this map. But sometimes it feels like trying to win the east of the map can kind of come at all costs. We've already spotted a Progetto at the back who's clearly trying to make their way uh, either to snipe at the back of the map or they're going to try and make their way down this corridor. What I'm going to do is try and use the fantastic view range that the Pershing has. It has 400 meters view range to try and get some spots. I don't want to go too far forwards because I don't feel so confident. And there we go. Look, there's a Skoda. If I'd gone too far forwards, I'm actually going to try and track him. Oh, did you see? Oh, it wasn't actually my retrack. One of us retracked. Okay, now that I feel that that is almost a demoralizing event for the enemy team. Now I'm going to push forwards. I'm going to tell my team that I'm going to advance. I'm going to try to advance through these bushes. And oh dear, are you ready? This could be one of the worst things ever. I might be about to get absolutely eviscerated. Luckily, it's slow. Oh, we can start to breathe a little bit easier. This is a bit of a nasty bit again. I have to try and use the turret armor on this vehicle, which again isn't the best, but isn't the worst. You're going to be hearing me say that a lot about this tank. Now, why is this your first love? Because I got to... The first tech tree I ever went down was the German heavy tanks. And then I decided to go down the German medium tanks as well. Because when I had the German medium tanks in the game, I had all the engines, right? The problem was, is that uh, the German tanks, the medium-wise, just they weren't quite flexible enough for my nature. I like to be able to do everything. I like to be a bit of a jack of all trades of the battlefield. And to not have, quite often, the gun depression. Or to have the the... the gun handling as well that you used to have on the American tanks and they still have good gun handling I wouldn't exactly call them stellar these days compared to what a, quite a few vehicles are like in the game okay so I decided I want to get stuck into this one what I want to do is actually swing across here you don't ever drive down there you want to drive across and as long as I don't get spotted as I do this I'm going to drive through these bushes here don't worry, drive through these bushes, drive through this bush, drive through this bush as well. Now we're going to get spotted from the left, and so we have to swing left. Our sixth sense should go off right about now. But because hopefully we've swung quickly, we haven't given the enemy team enough time to be able to shoot us. That was a pretty darn flawless advance there. And now we've got the, uh, the Pantera pressured. I'm hoping that someone on my team can put some pressure on the Udez. And we've got a little bit of spotting on the Progetto as well. I really hope this Udez doesn't hit me here. Otherwise, I'm going to be not having a very good game here. But I really feel like it's very important that you do try to pressure this flank. Okay, so from this position, you've got to be really careful over there. I've made the advance. I've already started to take the fight to the enemy team. But I've got to just try and take a quick look here to see what this Udez is up to without getting hit by the Pantera. And there's a Progetto on my side at the back. Yes, 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 Mr. Progetto. Yes, yes, yes. 
Okay, well I'm hoping that my team will continue to advance now that we've got the Italian auto reloader focused on us and our artillery should have done a little bit of damage. No, it looks like our artillery missed. So why don't I just become the world's most annoying Pershing, right? That's what I'm going to do. I'm not the most important tank in this matchup. So what I'm going to do is just be bloody annoying by going and proxy spotting this Udez. The Charfu Tier 4 is going to go in and hopefully finish off the Progetto. And I'm thinking about trying to get a shot into the turret of this Udez without hopefully getting hit by Rotunba. He wants to shoot me in. Of course, if I go up and I'm not using my gun depression, it's going to cause me a lot of pain. So what I should do is probably actually turn my tank to the left here and try and use some of my gun depression against the Udez. But he'll be able to kill me in a single shot. I miss, but I've got the better rate of fire than him if he's using the top gun, unless he's using the 90mm. So I actually want to go around and take a more pole position now. It looks like our Char Tier 4 just got obliterated by that tank, and the Udez is not going to like what I just did to him. So I think he's just going to come and try and use his gun depression to harass us. Luckily, he missed the shot. Okay, this is very interesting. I've got to ask my team for a little bit of help. Get my gun round on him. Shoot him in the butt. Hope for a fire. Hopefully he doesn't high roll against me. Oh, he actually doesn't. He's kind of struggling in this situation. Why don't we lock his tracks down? Try and get him to go up the slope. And as long as he doesn't have his side on us... No! Yes, another bounce! Oh my lord, will we be able to kill him? If I ram him a little bit and then shoot him in the... Okay, well, apparently... The Swedish tank is very lightly armoured, and the Pershing is not, and the Pershing's actually quite a heavy old girl. Did you expect 246 ramming damage out of that? I certainly didn't. Nice duel, nice try, Udez. I would have really hoped that one of my tank destroyers would have helped me out, but alas, they didn't. Okay, so, so far, not a bad game for a Pershing with a single crew. Now, if I had brothers in arms and everything, I could probably pump this up, but right now... I'm, oh, I'm going to load some gold here. So, ooh, the gold rounds on this tank are fabulous. 268 millimeters of penetration. That went into the steel girder, I guess. 268 millimeters and 4,000 credits that went into a steel girder. But, oh, there we go. Seven base defense points. A little bit of damage as well. Can't say no to that. And this is what's just great about the Pershing. I actually bounced a shell. Uh, this tank has armor, unlike what the Udez has. The Udez doesn't have much armor at all, and so it has to make a sacrifice to be able to gain that alpha damage. It has to make a sacrifice to be able to gain that impact with the extra gun depression. 10 degrees of gun depression, 400 meters view range, enough armor to occasionally bounce. Oh my word, I love this tank. So I don't want to go too close to these vehicles over here. He might spot me, he might not. It's about, uh, it's about a 50-50 whether he spots me here or not. Luckily he doesn't. I'm going to get a, try and get a shot into his side, and you're noticing that the Pershing isn't the most accurate of vehicles. Okay, I can't pen him with standard rounds from this angle anymore unless he turns. Thank you very much. That was very nice of him. I used some kind of unicorn mind control. Oh, I didn't expect that bat chat to go down into that dip and escape me so much. That's rather frustrating. All right, let's try and keep the flanking plays. So, Pershing, it's pretty mobile. It's not the most mobile of medium tanks, but it's definitely not a slouch. It's, it feels like the vehicles actually get slower as you kind of reach the, the pinnacle of the American medium tank tech tree, but that's going to be a given considering that it is the um, it is the pattern that we're talking about. So the Pershing for me, it just still holds this absolute sweet spot in my heart as being the first vehicle that I was able to achieve a thousand average experience. And look, while now I'm not so impressed by a thousand average experience. Oh, I bounced up. No, I'm gonna die at the end of the game. No, I wanted to get the artillery. While now, I wouldn't think that getting a thousand average experience is all that special. But for me at the time, it was my first tank that over a hundred games, I got a thousand average experience. And I believe that it was because of the holistic nature, nature of the Pershing, the fact that you could load gold against those tier 10 tanks when you got the bad matchups, but you didn't have to against the equal and lower tier tanks as long as you knew about their weak points. It was because the vehicle could play the spotting role in a bad matchup, but also could play a bit more of a bruising role inside a good matchup that made me fall in love with this tank. And still today, I am happy. Second on experience, second on damage, and not the best matchup. This one is still a beaut, and I'll be playing it tonight during the Tech Tree Showcase. Spoilers! There's going to be an M48A5 pattern Tech Tree Showcase as it is top of the tree. Okay, look. 
everybody knows that my other original love, it's not tier 8, it's tier 7, how could I forget? My other original love is the Comet. So if you look at my most played tanks of all time in World of Tanks, I've got a few vehicles. Some of these might surprise you. My most played tank by far is the M48 A5 pattern. Love that thing. Bat Chat second place. Comet in a third, in a close third. The E75, the 140, the Type 59, because that used to be my only premium tank apart from the T34 on this account. T125, E100, Centurion Action 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Comet is actually my third most played tank, and not a lot of people realize that the pattern in the Bat Chat is actually, I've played it more than this. It's funny because a lot of people have played thousands and thousands and thousands of games in one individual vehicle, but for me it's always been the, the diversity and the variety in World of Tanks that has always kept me hooked, and I feel like I want to play every vehicle a couple times rather than play one vehicle a, a large amount of time. Anyway, what do I love about the Comet? Well, let me show you. Let me show you what I love about the Comet. What don't I love about this medium tank? 12 degrees of gun depression, great rate of fire. Mm, just, it's an all-rounder. It's a bit like a Pershing at tier 7. But the damage per minute on this vehicle is actually superior on the Comet than it is on the Pershing at tier 8. And so that means that when you get into a matchup like this, where you're against quite a few tier 6 tanks and some tier 7 tanks, you're going to be absolutely awesome. Okay, so the first thing to do when you spawn in on Live Oaks is to try and get your team working together. Hey, friends! I will rush into the dip. Come with me. Uh, come with me if you want to win. There we go. Now we're going to tell them here. Hopefully, we'll get our friends working together. Rush, rush the, uh, what, 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 I can't spell. Rush the dip together. We'll almost certainly win. We'll almost certainly win. There we go. Okay, we'll see. We'll see whether I, whether I can back my mouth up. Uh, don't stop before the dip. Okay. Okay, let's see if it works out. Look at this! Look at them! They're all coming! YouTube, is this it? Honestly, I think that there's a lot... I've been talking about this a lot in my videos recently, that I've been trying my hardest to try and communicate with my friends. You know, as I get a bit long in the tooth, and you've kind of experienced being that individual player, I think more and more it's always the, the teamwork that becomes more and more rewarding for me inside games. And World of Tanks is, uh, is none no exception. Alright, so we've managed to get into a position. We've got some glimpse of the M40. Oh, the M the assault tank at the back. The assault Sherman. And you know what? They're actually not attacking. So I'm going to take the attack to them. Now, I wanted to try and catch somebody in the dip, but nobody did. And oh my word, my team has actually listened to me. I think they've actually listened to me a little bit too much here. Anyway, let's try and get forwards. There's a Dickamax that we've managed to spot. Don't really want to take a shot from the Dicker Max. That'll be 300 alpha. Oh, and nobody hit him. That's an absolute awful start for me. Come on, friends. Get the Dicker Max at the back of the map. That's right. There we go. First tier 7 dealt with. The artillery hits me from the back. We're going to tell our team where the SPG is. Okay, so this is a bit of a, a sticky situation that we're getting ourselves into now because they're going to have TDs camping there. Oh, there's actually a Leo. Okay, so good rate of fire. Average gun handling. The Comet is a funny one because... Oh, come on, Artie, you god Don't do this to my favorite tank. Don't do this to my favorite tank, Artie. What are you doing? Okay, this is actually a really tricky scenario because, of course, there's a tier 6 self-propelled gun on the enemy team who is absolutely focused on us and obliterating us. So let's try and change positions. Let's try and change positions. We spot the tier 7 medium tank. We're going to have to load some gold here to be reliable. We actually crit the Peter there. Wonder what kind of crit that was. Okay, this Assault Sherman seems to be coming back. Okay, so I think that we have committed a lot of people to the dip, which is great. I'm hoping they're going to be able to push through, and I don't think they need me here anymore. Quite often what I like to do is try and create a crossfire, try and create some cross vision for my team. Oh, here we go. Let's see if we can get this Excalibur. Black. Get one more shot off before I pull back. Oh, that was a mistake. The Peter just hit me for all of my remaining hit points. That is the problem with the Comet. Because the rate of fire is so good, but the alpha damage is so poor, I quite often find myself wanting to try to squeeze out one extra shot against my opponents. And it, as you could see in that last moment, it just got me absolutely wrecked. 
So when things go well in the comic, they go well. When things don't go well in the comic, well, they don't go so well. <laughs> All right, well, I thought that this was going to absolutely win us the game, but unfortunately for me, my team are finding it very hard to be able to push through this flank. Luckily, we seem to have managed it now, and I'm hoping that I can get a few shots into this tier seven TD. Oh, he is tracked. Oh, this is, this is where the Comet is the best tier seven medium, best DPM. Uh, for any tier 7 medium, I believe, and you can really start to go to town on your opponents. Delicious, delicious, delicious. Also, I'd like to say just how filthy my setup is on the Comet. You'll notice me using full premium consumables. You'll notice that I have a lot of gold rounds in this tank. Look, you, you know that there's that loved child that you just want to kind of treat better than all of the other kids. Well, actually, don't do that. That sounds horrible. Don't actually treat your children differently. Treat them all the same. But for me... It's like, it's like a first love that will always, or shall I say a second love after the Pershing, that will always stay in my heart. And accordingly, I feel that I have to, I have to do everything that I can to, um, to, to give the, the Comet every chance that it has. Also, look, it, I would hate to admit that it's actually quite a mediocre medium tank that usually I just try hard as, as hard as I possibly can at it. <laughs> that would be one to admit, wouldn't it? Oh, man. Uh, that's totally not the case. This this tank's just great. Okay, this is going to be tricky, though. This is going to be real tricky. Oh, I actually hit that 416 twice. Finish him off! All oh, right, this could be really fun, but of course it'd be really terrible. All it takes is one artillery shell. Oh! Got him! 2,000 damage, 1,000 tracking and spotting. Now we can make our way back. So I think by winning the south, it's allowed us to just have a, a really nice big stranglehold on the enemy team here. And then I'm hoping that I can manage to get the all the base defense points against this guy. Woohoo! I'll take 63 base defense points. IS-2 trying to wiggle his best. It is probably not going to help. A little bit more. A valiant attempt by the IS-2 to cap. But he is down now. Ooh, ooh. This game is turning quite spicy. Um, unfortunately, I'm not spotting for my damage here. And when you're not spotting for your damage in World of Tanks, you're only getting half of the experience that you otherwise would have been getting if you were spotting for yourself. Which is why, if you want to get a lot of experience in World of Tanks, it's quite often a good idea to be able to boost the view range of the vehicle. If you boost the view range of the vehicle, then you are going to be getting twice the experience that if you deal damage to tanks that you otherwise couldn't spot. Of course, probably not necessary in some kind of heavy tank. All right, talking about heavy tanks, that VK, how has he got a thousand hit points on a tier six? That's quite impressive. This game's actually really close still. Oh, there's the guy who was shooting me earlier. Revenge. Yeah, I even roll high. The alpha damage of this vehicle is 140, so 156 is a decent roll. All right, that was the M44 that nearly gave us hell earlier on in the battle. I'm very happy that they're shut down now. A little bit of revenge, right? The M44 was taking away so many of my hit points that I would have been unable to do everything that you saw me do towards the end of the battle, which is very important. Okay, that Lorraine. Are you ready? This is where the Lorraine is great. Farm, 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 says the Lorraine, right? Is he trying to shoot me? Oh! That's two games in a row where I got shut down by the final tank. Oh, talk about being vindictive. Well, good shot, right? That's the way you should go down in World of Tanks. You should go down by trying to make sure that you pick up as much damage or as many kills as you possibly can. That's the name of the game, right? So honorable display by the VK at the end of the game. Slightly annoying for me. And what will it be for the Comet today? Ba 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 oh, First class, because we weren't spotting for ourselves. If I had been spotting for myself a little bit more, it would have been an ace tanker. Still, that's a pretty good result. I lose credits, I fully admit. I was a gold noob. I use premium consumables in my Comet. Like, it's like that girlfriend that you just treat right, I guess. Or boyfriend that you treat right. So... The Comet, 3,000 damage here, 1,167 base experience, 1,400 uh, spotting, and also a nice bit of decapping. I still love this tank. If you can get this thing on a ridgeline, it's awesome. Sure, it doesn't have quite half the armor, but whew, when it gets going with that rate of fire, whew, it's absolutely gnarly. There's no better tier 7 medium tank. Although, 
as you will have known from my videos about a couple of months ago when I was talking about the T20, that the T20 is probably going to be better for the majority of players. But if you have a great crew and you're willing to set the vehicle up in the correct way, I don't even have bond equipment on my Comet. What is up with that? One day I'll have to spend bonds on something that aren't terrible <laughs> tier 10 tanks and tier 8 reward vehicles. I have to actually spend it on equipment that I'm going to use on some of my phase, but I can't really imagine that as well. That's, that would be a definite stretch to put bond equipment on a Comet. I do love it, but not quite that much, at least anymore. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what are your favorite vehicles. Maybe they're not the ones that you take out every day, but what was your first love of a tank in World of Tanks? And if you're watching this video as it goes live, as I said earlier, there's an M48 A5 pattern. Tech Tree Showcase starting right now because the vehicle is top of the tree so you can get it for a discount so I'm going to show you the entire line and then I'm going to see if I can finally dial in what my final equipment choice is for the M48 pattern. Do I really think that it's the turbocharger? Hmm, I'll have to see. Anyway, really looking forward to seeing all of you right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby and as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.